Hello, everybody, and well, oh, what is happening here? And welcome to um, this Cthulhu Mythos video. And today we are talking the shadow out of time. Oh, I should probably hang on, hang on, hang on. The shadow out of time. Now, this book here, this story, um, this is a longer one, okay? And um, this might be my ADHD talking, but um, this story is very much Lovecraft. Meaning, if you take kind of everything Lovecraft can do, and you wanted like a greatest hits of it, but in a story, this would be it. With that said, this is not one of my favorite stories at all. And I think a lot of people would find that shocking because I'm pretty sure most people absolutely love this story. Like, um, if they love Lovecraft, they love this. And I, I am not one of those people. The reason being is because it fucking drags for me. It's very long, and it's your typical Lovecraft, like, oh, hello, everybody, I'm going to tell you a story. And by telling you a story, I mean I'm going to talk to you as if I was a history book. And I'm going to tell you things so you think that what I'm saying is factual because of all the evidence that I will provide even though all of my evidence is objection hearsay. So if you have some friends out there that have never read Lovecraft, I would like use this as a test. I would give them this story first and say, huh, here you go. Tell me what you think. And I would be really interested in how they take this. Um, I think Lovecraft also would excel um like people like people who would really like him are people who are very much into thick fucking fantasy books like super fucking big world building fantasy books like they want to know every fucking epoch that fucking happened on this fantastical planet and who was doing what to who and who smoked what and who blah, 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 blah. Okay. Now, with all of this said, I really enjoy Lovecraft. I really do. I think um, the way he was able to fool close to a hundred years of people into thinking that there was some basis of truth to the things he was writing about um, is just absolutely fascinating to me like on a psychological level i think lovecraft like i don't think anyone can touch him with the exception of maybe um l ron hubbard just for starting scientology not really anything that he wrote other than his scientology stuff but it's um it's just it's fascinating um i think his shorter work is way better now we're going to get to a point where we do um, the case of Charles Dexter Ward, which is Lovecraft's really, it's really his only novel, okay? And that one I fucking love because it is, um, even though there are, there's one kind of similar element between this story and Charles Dexter Ward. But for the most part, Dexter Ward is... Um, much more of a Edgar Allan Poe type tale that has Cthulhu mythos elements as opposed to this, which is just like, I, I, I would never say that this is a rehash of at the mountains of madness, but like, if you really liked at the mountains of madness, you are probably really going to like shadow at a time. Like, Let's just, let's just be fair here. 
So this was originally published in Astounding Stories in June of 1936. And hopefully I'll have a picture of that up here so we could look at it. Um, but basically what this story um, is about, it's about this guy named Peasley. Now Peasley, like most Lovecraft protagonists, are um, very well educated, um, possibly a professor, which um, Peasley is, he is, but I'm talking about typical Lovecraft char characters, who um, is so knowledgeable of the arcane that they slowly start to go crazy. This one, you're you're not sure exactly um, how crazy this this fool might be, because we're going to be talking about the great Yace race. Uh, I knew I was going to fuck that up. I looked at the word and I'm like, I'm going to fuck that up. The great race of yeth yeth so the great race of yeth there they are these extraterrestrials who um can transfer their minds into the bodies of other life forms and um it's actually quite an ingenious um way of making sure you never die but you can transfer you transfer your mind into so what and who's it's um and live in that shell but the cool thing is or the thing that's interesting is as we find out um the the person whose mind needs to now go somewhere goes to this other place where there's all these other people from all different times all like in this room talking about where the fuck they're from and what the fuck is they're doing and what fucking year it is. And so you got people from the past, people from the future, people from right now, people from other fucking planets, like all of these fucking people trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. And one of the things that makes this um, amazing and makes like, again, what Lovecraft does so well he goes down a fucking laundry list, okay? I don't even think a laundry list is good enough. He goes down a grocery list, and I'm talking Costco-sized grocery list, of all the people he's talked to, and when they're from, and how they die, and if they die, and um, just enormous detail. And so through this... He's learning about all this other shit, too. It's just one of the many ways, and the way Lovecraft writes generally is very academic. So it feels like you're reading something from a scientific journal. And um, like Lovecraft, before he was really writing fiction, he was in the amateur, what was it, amateur journalism society or something like that he was like the president of it um so the motherfucker knows how to spin a yarn um and make it sound like um t.s Eliot wrote it motherfucker um but anyway so going through all this stuff it, it's just fascinating and um i was doing a bit of the old search on this the research and I came across this bit from S.T. Jos Joshi, who is like the, like, ultimate Lovecraft scholar. And he said that in 1933, okay, Lovecraft went and saw the film Berkeley Square four times in the theater. He loved it. Why did he love it? And it's funny because I remember, I think, hearing about this on Voluminous, the H.P. Lovecraft Letter podcast. I remember them talking about this, I think. But he loved it because it was about a guy who sent his mind back into the 18th century, into one of his ancestors from the 18th century. 
and Lovecraft being the um, Georgian chap that he was, would like nothing more than to go live in the good old days. Um, and I'm not going to draw any allusions to anybody right now who is trying to make things like things were in 1850. I'm not going to do it, so you can't make me do it. So anyway, so this Lovecraft tale is good, but it's fucking long. It is, for me, like, really hard. Like, a short story shouldn't make you feel like you're reading fucking War and Peace, okay? And yes, that is an exaggeration, but not by much, okay? So it's very good. It's very Lovecraft. And I think people who are new to Lovecraft, um, I don't know if they would love this, but I think in reading this, you would get um, a very good representation of what Lovecraft's writing is, what it could be, what it can do, how it can make you feel. So with all that said, let me know down below what you think of this story and if, if this is one of your favorites or not. And um, I will talk to you guys soon. So see you later.